Well, I have no idea if I'm in the right spot. I've had a lot of things happen since the last video. I uh, couldn't get text to place. And then my recording program that I record these videos with just all of a sudden quit. So I think I'm in the right spot. I think we just did this text up here and resized it. And now we're going to go to Artboard 1 to where you see this one. And we're going to place some text inside here. So I'm going to click. Uh, I think my room is haunted today. Fit the artboard in the window. All right, so we're working on this number one artboard now. Uh, you can import text into your Illustrator document from a text file created in another application. One of the advantages of importing text from a file rather than copying and pasting is that the imported text retains its character in paragraph formatting by default. For example, text from an RTF file retains its font and style specifications in Illustrator unless you remove formatting when you import the text. In this section, you'll place text from a plain text file into your design to get the bulk of the text for the ads in place. So, choose if you shouldn't have anything selected, so click select, deselect if you have anything selected. And then we're going to choose File, and then Place, and we're going to go to your Lesson 9 folder, and we're going to click this L9 text, and we're going to click Paste. This is going to give you some options. For now, we're just going to click OK, and accept all these defaults. We're going to move the loaded text icon to the lower left part of the artboard in this aqua box. We're going to drag from the upper left corner to make a text box. So let's click right here and go to about right here. If you were to simply click with the loaded text pointer, a type object would be created that is smaller than the size of the artboard, which we don't want to do. When working with area type, each area type object has an in port and an out port. These ports enable you to link type objects and flow text between them. An empty out port indicates that all the text is visible and that the object isn't linked. An arrow in a port indicates that the typed object is linked to another type object. A red plus sign, like you see right down here in this one, indicates that the object contains additional text called overflow text. You can adjust the text, resize the type object, or thread the text to another type object to show all of the overflow text. To thread or continue text from one object to the next, you have to link the objects. Linked objects can be of any shape. However, the text must be entered in an object or along a path, not as a point type, simply by clicking or cre to create text. Next, you'll thread text between two type objects. We're going to first choose View, Fit All in Window. With the selection tool selected, we're going to click the out port in the lower right corner, right here, this right here. Click it and then move the pointer away. The pointer changes to a loaded text icon. You can see that there's text loaded in that. Move the pointer to the upper left corner of the aqua box on the horizontal add and drag it to the right. So drag it like this. And you can see that it linked it from one to the other. With the second type object still selected, notice that the line connecting the two type objects, which is an arrow pointing to here. This non-printing line is the text thread that tells you that the two objects are connected. If you don't see this line, choose View Show Text Threads if you don't have it. So if you click View. Where is it? Oh. Mine shows it, so I would have to click hide. So if you have show text threads, that's where you would click right there. 
All right, click in the first threaded type object on the left. We're going to drag the middle point to the right to make it as wide as you have here. So we're going to click on this one and we're going to drag it over to here. The text will flow between the type objects. If you delete the second type object, the text is pulled back into the original as an overflow text. Although not visible, the overflow text isn't deleted. After resizing your text area, you may see more or less in your text area on the right than you see in uh, than you see with mine, and that's okay. You just need to have some text here and some text here. All right. Moving on. We're now going to work on formatting type. You can format text in a lot of creative ways. You can apply formatting to one character, a range of characters, or all characters. As you'll soon see, selecting the type object rather than selecting the text inside lets you apply formatting options to all of the text in the object, including options from the character and paragraph panels, fill and stroke attributes, and transparency settings. In this section, you'll discover how to change text attributes such as size and font, and later learn how to save that formatting as text styles. In this section, you'll apply font to text. In addition to local fonts, Creative Cloud members have access to a library of fonts for use in desktop applications like InDesign or Microsoft Word and on websites. Trial Creative Cloud members can also have select fonts from Adobe. Fonts you choose are activated. <coughs> Excuse me and appear alongside other locally installed fonts in the fonts list in Illustrator. By default, Adobe fonts are turned on in the Creative Cloud desktop application to activate fonts and make them available in your desktop applications. Next, we're going to select and activate Adobe fonts at the, so you can use them in your project. Ensure that your Creative Cloud desktop application has been launched and you are signed in with your ID. Select the Type tool. Type tool and click in the small text in the vertical add on the left and then we're going to uh, select all or you could do command A if you're on a Mac or control A on a window to select all the text in both type objects you can see that they are all highlighted so you know they're all selected in the Properties panel, click the arrow to the right of the Font Family menu where you see Myriad Pro. Notice the fonts that appear. The fonts you see by default are those that are installed locally. In the Font menu, an icon appears to the right of the font names in the list indicating what type of font it is. If you were to see a cloud right there, it's an activated font. O is an open type. The O with this is a variable font. You have some SVG fonts. You have some true type fonts. These are true type fonts. Uh, there's some Adobe PhotoScript. So you see there's a bunch of different kinds. You can click Find More. And that will... It's initializing and it will show you a list of fonts that, ooh, that's, that's what those said. Uh, my list will look a little different from yours since Adobe is constantly updating the font selections. Click the filter icon and that's going to open a menu. You can filter the font list by selecting classification and property criteria. Click the sans serif option under classification sans serif sans serif what does that one say serif so sans serif this is without serif that's one we're going to choose and then you scroll down the list to find Raj Honey 
do that. Let me move this. Oh, let me. Ooh. Looking for R's. That's way down there. Got a lot on here. N O P Q R S. R A. How does this spell? R A J. R A J. Raj Honey. Click the arrow to the left to see the font styles. Click the activate icon to the far right of the semi bowl. So we want Rajhani semi bowl. We're going to click that. And it will ask you if you want to activate that font. Click OK. Do the same for Rajhani bold. Click OK. Once the fonts are activated, be patient. It may take a little while. You may begin to use them. After activating fonts, click the words clear all towards the top of the menu to remove that sans serif filtering. Clear all. And you can see all the fonts again. Now that the Adobe fonts are activated, you can use them in any application. That's what we're going to do next. So let's. With the threaded text still selected and the font family mem mem menu still showing, click the Show Activated Fonts button. That's this little cloud right here. Click that. That will show your activated fonts, only the ones that are activated. The list that I have will probably be different than yours. That's okay as long as you see the Raj... Mine may not have activated yet. I'm going to pause here and make sure, wait till mine gets activated. I don't know why mine, I may have to go back and do it. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to end this video. And the next thing we'll do is just keep yours highlighted. And we're going to, uh, we're going to change it to that Raj Honey. <clears> Thank <throat> you.